morning students today's topic is autoimmune diseases myasthenia gravis and the rheumatoid arthritis these two are the autoimmune diseases that we are going to deal today so what do you mean by autoimmune diseases before going to autoimmune diseases we we'll let us know what is autoimmunity autoimmunity is caused due to the immune response acting against the antigens okay it was a paul enrich who discovered this condition as a horror autoto autotoxis or autotoxus okay the the lymphocytes t lymphocytes and b lymphocytes are the two lymphocytes isn't it would recognize the self antigen and destroy them okay so the disease that are caused due to the development of the autoimmunity is are called autoimmune diseases okay the self uh, development or uh, due to the development of the autoimmunity in our body it which is going to result in the autoimmune diseases okay let us know what and all are the diseases which is caused by the autoimmune also autoimmunity also okay so the term destruction caused by the action of the t cells is seen in the case of the rheumatoid arthritis okay i'll be explaining the rheumatoid arthritis also completely in detail uh, rheumatoid arthritis these t cells destroy the tissue in the joints leading to the inflammation and the pain okay that is which is going to cause the uh, rheumatoid arthritis the action of b cells that produce antibodies is seen in the case of the a uh, hemolytic anemia okay where the antigens on the b cell rbc rbcs are recognized by the autoimmunity auto auto antibodies bringing about the destruction of the rbc cells so thereby our own cells uh, are destroyed by the autoimmunity okay so the rbc count will be reduced hence forth leading to the anemia okay it may lead to cause or it it causes the anemia so there are two types of autoimmune diseases divided into two main types that is one is the organ specific autoimmunity okay autoimmune disease and the second one is the systematic autoimmune diseases why have we segregated these two is the one which is the organ specific autoimmunity is uh, these are those where only specific organs are affected okay our immune system is of two different types isn't it the one which is going to have a specific target and the other one which is the normal uh, you know for uh, it can get adjustable to the other uh, other regions also the immune system what we have isn't it the one which is a specific uh, region or the targeted uh, antibody which is required to destroy a particular antigen that is what that we are going to speak now see this is due to the fact that the immune response is directed specially at the antigen seen only in that particular tissue or the organ the organ may either be destroyed or and the and fail to function okay or it may show the excessive functioning two extreme conditions may happen either it will be destroyed or it will start functioning over uh, you know more uh, aggressively okay so the examples for this particular kind of an immune autoimmune disease we have three typical examples Hash, uh, hashimotos uh, disease where hashimotos disease uh, is nothing but a condition wherein there is a deficiency in the iodine which is leading to the gout okay so that hashimotos disease is nothing but the or uh, the um, the deficiency in the uh, iodine which uh, wherein our uh, thyroid glands are not able to take up the iodine content or do not have a capacity to take up the iodine wherein resulting uh, resulting in which there is an autoimmune response is happening which results in the inflammation of the uh, thyroid glands resulting in the gout okay so there these uh, this uh, is one of the disease and the insulin dependent diabetes mellitus here the pancreas which has the beta cells the beta cells are not uh, are not uh, been able to produce the insulin so hence forth the disease is caused 
okay this is also coming under the organ specific autoimmune disease the next one is the myasthenia gravis that in detail we will be studying today in this class okay myasthenia gravis what do you mean by myasthenia gravis and how is it caused it is caused by an error in the transmission of nerve impulses to the muscles what is that there is an obstacle or an error in the transmission of the nerve impulses is it occurs when normal communication between the nerve and the muscle is interrupted okay so there is some hurdle something that is coming in between the muscle and the nerve impulses which is having or which is blocking the way of the impulses okay thereby resulting in the uh, you know uh, the uh, the resulting in the uh, miscommunication between the muscles and the nervous system the place where the nerve cells connect with the muscles uh, they are controlled uh, they have to be controlled here okay so uh, see here normally what happens i'll tell you first and then what happens during the myasthenia gravis i'll tell you see normally the neurotransmitters are the chemicals that that neurons or the brain cells use to communicate the information okay so normally when electrical signals or the impulses trans uh, transit down uh, a motor nerve or, or a, a travel down a motor nerve uh, you know a nerve endings release a neurotransmitter called as acetylcholine receptor on the muscles okay see as the neuro uh, as as we all know there is a synaptic junction between the two uh, neurons also and muscle and the neuron also isn't it there is a small little gap which is being that impulses is being taken up you know from one junction to the other junction is through chemicals okay these chemicals are here are acetylcholine okay so acetylcholine when it is coming from the one junction to the other junction when it is crossing over the bridge what is happening the chemicals are in the form of vesicles which transport from one one end to the other end you must have all studied in this in this um, procedure in your plus 2 also isn't it the neural transmission uh, so there when the acetylcholine is uh, transporting the impulses there is a block okay so let us complete the first normal thing so when there is a proper uh, you know signaling and the transmission is happening then the contractions of the muscle uh, muscles is going to take place okay otherwise what is going to happen in the myasthenia gravis antibodies or the immune proteins produced by the body immune system attach or block or produce um uh, you know or alter or destroy the acetylcholine receptors on the motor end plates of the muscles okay so what is going to happen either they may they are going to alter it either they are going to uh, you know block it attach to uh, another uh, receptors or uh, you know they they are going to destroy the acetylcholine receptors so all these things are ha happening antibodies may get attached to the receptors instead of the acetylcholine that has to get attached to it that's place the antibodies are taking up or it can alter it can block so either some error is going to take place where in resulting in the acetylcholine cannot bind to the receptor when acetylcholine is not able to bind to the receptor then the auto antibodies also induce the complement mediated cell lysis okay when uh, when they are in uh, mediating the cell lysis the skeletal muscles become weak and later the person feels difficult to move or even eat okay what is happening that particular portion or the particular region uh, the cell gets lysis okay the cells starts breaking down because it is not getting the signals properly and there is some error happen thereby resulting in the uh, you know uh, media cell mediated lysis is going to take place and the cells are getting destroyed there resulting in which the the region is getting weakened and the person is uh, feeling very difficult to move out each also okay the symptoms include weakening of the muscles 
drooping of the eyelids okay or double vision the person will try to see a double vision uh, picture is seen um, and uh, the uh, the inability of the person to uh, retract the corners of his mouth okay he cannot smile properly the original spa smile what he has he loses it off okay he cannot smile he cannot eat he cannot open his mouth properly or cannot speak uh, fluently also okay so the impair in speaking causes causes difficulty in swallowing also affect in chewing and change in the facial expressions so all the, these are the symptoms which are going to be caused by the myasthenia gravis okay so now i will show you how that this is what is the synaptic junction that i was speaking to you a little before see so this is the normal functioning of the nerves see here the this is the nerve ending which has to transport the impulses to the muscles which is there here muscle activation okay so see these are the red color dots which we are seeing is the acetylcholine chemical with the vesicles taking up the signals okay so they take up the signals these green color patches on the muscles are nothing but the acetylcholine receptors which receives the acetylcholine from the a uh, neural junction or the synaptic junction to the muscles okay so these uh, receptors are being blocked by the antibodies can you see here antibodies y shaped antibodies which are getting attached to it yeah those are blocking since they are taking up their place where do this acetylcholine has to go and attach isn't it there is no space for the acetylcholine to go and get attached to the muscle receptors which is there acetylcholine receptors which are there on the muscle layer okay so this is the condition wherein uh, we call it as uh, myasthenia gravis where you know it is leading it is blocking the acetylcholine um, receptors here this is the normal condition wherein the nerve uh, this is the nerve okay that axon uh, nerve you know no you uh, correct so the neuron which is there the, this is the neuron ending or the nerve ending we call it as this is the synaptic junction from here the acetylcholine vesicles are coming out which has to which was supposed to get attached to the their own receptors on the muscles which is not happening in the myasthenia gravis because of the blockage of the antibodies on it okay so these are the symptoms which i uh, discussed a little earlier drooping of the eyelids you can see uh, the person is trying to open the eyelids also it is it, it is not happening because the eyelids and the eyebrows have drooped down okay the muscle has just uh, fatigue and there is no signals been transported to that particular eyelid muscle to open it broadly okay so it is just drooping it down and then you can see the smoothing of the out uh, out of the forehead and uh, eyebrow drooping that is what the same picture which i have shown here that is what you can see here the drooping of the eyelid and the eyebrow also you can also see there is an expression change facial expression see this side the face uh, is completely different and this side you can see that uh, no snarling expression and you can see the drooping of corner of the mouth the mouth you know if, if it is not proper it is just tilted like this drooping of the um mouth which you can see here in the diagram which also results in the many other drastic changes that i discussed a little earlier okay so the next after myasthenia gravis as i told you it is organ specific uh, to a particular region only it is getting affected isn't it apart from this that is the uh, muscles the transmission of the muscles apart from the this particular uh, region it is uh, there are some research going on Uh, that it is it is also affecting the thymus gland. Crum it also has a control immune, uh, no controlling, uh, uh, you know, uh, obstruction for the thymus gland also. The where thymus gland controls immune immune functions and may be associated with the thy uh, uh, myasthenia gravis. That is what is the article being told. Okay, so the thymus gland grows gradually. until puberty then gets smaller and replaced by the fat usually okay throughout the childhood the thymus play a very important role in the development of the immune system 
बिकॉज इट इज रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर प्रोड्यूसिंग द टी लिम्फोसाइड्स एंड और नथिंग बट द टी सेल्स अ स्पेसिफिक टाइप ऑफ स्पेसिफिक टाइप of uh, white blood cells that protects the body from the viruses and the infections uh, in many adults with the thys uh, thysmenia gravis what is happening with respect to the thymus gland is they remain large itself they are not getting reduced and the fat is not been replaced by the thymus gland they are remained in the larger size itself the people with a disease typically have clusters of immune cells in the uh, in their thymus gland and may develop the uh, you know um, a thymomas okay thymomas is nothing but tumors of the thymus gland okay so the thymomas are most often harmless but they can become cancerous also in the further days is you know the future days is scientists have been believed that the thymus may give incorrect instructions to the developing immune cells okay if this is happening then the thymus may give the wrong information for the developing immune cells so this is one of the condition wherein the thymus gland is also uh, the person with the thysmenia gravis will also have this type of problems also okay this is an associated problem so ultimately causing the immune system to attack its own cells and the cell and the tissues by giving the wrong information maybe it may give the wrong information ultimately causing the immune system to attack its its our own cells or the host cells and the tissues and um, you know uh, tissues cells or tissues and produce the acetylcholine receptors antibodies setting the stage for the attack on the neuromuscular transmission so it is only setting up the you um, know the stage for an attacking of our own neuromuscular transmission so what is the treatment for the myasthenia gravis uh, so patients are projected to the monoclonal antibodies or we also have certain drugs called or the medication we can put them into anti colin uh, esterases medication you can put in them or you can also put them into immuno suppression drugs or suppressive drugs uh, plasma pleurisis and um, intravenous um, uh, immunoglobulin what is this plasma pleurisis is a uh, uh, you know a procedure of removal of harmful antibodies from the plasma and replacing them with the good ones okay this is the plasma pleurisis but um, uh, intravenous uh, immunoglobulins is highly concentrated injection of the antibodies pulled from many healthy uh, uh, you know individual donors or it can be uh, you know prepared by the um, in the uh, animal body that temporarily changes the way of the immune system operation okay these two are the temporary but the permanent has to be done by the any other methods or continuously the person should be put under the medication it works by binding the uh, you know this two are things this works by binding the antibodies that causes the myasthenia gravis and removing them removing them from the circulation see this myasthenia gravis as i told you it's an organ specific also it can travel the cells which are there which are already been given a wrong information can travel from one organ to the other organ or the neighboring organs which also have an effect on them okay likewise the facial expression which you saw no all those which is connected to each other each organ is one by one getting uh, destroyed or getting infected systemic autoimmune disease occurs when the t cells and b cells become hyperactive due to defect in the regulation of the immune system both humoral and cell mediated response cause destruction of tissues by production of the auto uh, antibodies and immune complexes also systematic uh, autoimmune diseases affect many organs so here multiple organs are being affected and multiple organs are destroyed okay so let us see what is that the first one first typical example is the multiple sclerosis and rheumatoid arthritis and systematic uh, you know systematic erythromyosis is one of the years 
So the multiple sclerosis is what is it is going to affect the central nervous system. The T cells which are which are many uh, present in the cerebral uh, cerebrospinal fluid, which are going to attack on the myelin sheath of the brain, uh, you know, destroying their own myelin sheath, which results in the multiple sclerosis. Okay, so that is ultimately a central nervous system which is affecting the central nervous system. Okay, and uh, here the second one is the rheumatoid arthritis. I'll be dealing that with uh, you know in detail in today's class. And third one is the systematic uh, systemic uh, lupus uh, erythromatosis. Uh, here, what is happening is uh, the cells, our own cells, or the immune cells. Uh, antibodies which are going to destroy the rbc cells the platelets of the host okay so thereby resulting in the uh, lack of the rbc's lack of the platelets which is leading to anemia and also there is a condition called as thrombocytopenia okay so this is the two conditions which is ultimately resulting in due to the breaking down of our own rbc cells and the platelets okay so that is why it is called as thrombomyto uh, mitosis okay so in detail uh, rheumatoid arthritis that we are going to deal today is uh, see rheumatoid arthritis is seen as a result of type 3 hypersensitivity reaction caused by the formation of the immune complexes so what is this type 3 sensitivity reaction uh, if you have subscribed to my video you have a uh, uh, continuation this is my last video continuation so the last video what i was talking was about hypersensitivity and allergy okay there were four types of hypersensitivity types type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 so out of which the type 3 is going to cause the rheumatoid arthritis or the hypersensitivity reaction is caused by the formation of the immune response immune complexes which is resulting in the rheumatoid arthritis the synovial membrane or the synovium membrane is attacked resulting in the swelling so the synovial membrane is attached resulting in the swelling and the pain which is going to cause the rheumatoid arthritis so now the type 3 and type of uh, type 3 sensitivity reaction i told you, you know if you have to be a uh, complete explanation if you want uh, the link is in the subscription i have another video for it uh, the link is in the description which you can refer for it okay and there is a, there is a production of rheumatoid factors that attach to the fc region of the igg molecule so what is this fc factor or the f there is fc factor which is going to attach to a particular res, a region of the uh, igg molecule okay but the complexes formed are deposited in the joints which activate the complement reaction resulting in which the arthritis when left untreated it is going to have a fatal uh, you know uh, uh, fatal reactions and the deformity is also seen okay but see it has to be uh, treated wherein uh, this particular uh, region or attaching region is being misplaced okay thereby resulting in the uh, condition called as arthritis uh, inflammation or you can see the redness or there is a you no know, uh, i'll show you the picture of it see if this is the normal healthy joint cartilage is there here and you can also see here see the swollen inflammated suvein uh, synovial membrane which you can see here see here the membrane which is uh, so, uh, you know the red color membrane which you can see here is swollen here it is blue color can you see that so here the red color one which is the swollen region of the synovial membrane cartilage uh, wears away meaning see the cartilage is having a little wear and tear here and there reduces the joint space also so this joint space when it is reducing there is a friction between the two bones once there is a friction between the two bones it is very much painful okay the bone erosion is also taking place so these are all the conditions in the joint where the rheumatoid arthritis is uh, you know if the the condition of the rheumatoid arthritis is what we can see here in this particular joint okay the joints of the body are painfully swollen inflamed and stiff where simple movement also becomes very painful 
so the fingers arms legs wrists are most commonly affected regions here okay likewise if it is in the urban regions the software engineers which are having uh, which are continuously working on the laptops or in their systems their their uh, fingers and the wrists are continuously working on the system isn't it they are more pro prone to this particular kind of an um, condition that is or uh, rheumatoid arthritis of the wrists arms uh, fingers and all okay because more of pressure is uh, uh, being created on the bones of the hands or the uh, arms okay so the symptoms are worse on on uh, waking up in the morning and the stiff, uh, stiffness can last for about 30 minutes the joint is tender when it is touched hands may be red or, or puffy you know they they become very much um, swollen puffy like and uh, there may be uh, bumps in the tissues uh, under the skin of the arms they may also feel tired most of the times and uh, commonly there is a uh, weight loss is common because uh, they are feeling very much um, you know fatigue always the muscles are fatigue there so this is the condition where i was uh, speaking about see here the joints of the arms you know the little joints in the fingers are getting um, uh, you know swollen this uh, synovial fluid and the membrane is getting swollen resulting in the deformity of the arm see can you see the fingers which are normally like this are bent can you see so this is the condition where it is left untreated becomes an uh, unusual shape okay deformity is nothing but the uh, the shape has been changed the arm shape is completely changing same in case of the legs also you can see here the too much of affected uh, leg wherein the leg has to completely uh, taken off its shape okay so here see the, the small little finger has overcrossed the thumb finger and it is having a deformity so these two arms wherein you can see they are they are completely changed their shapes so the disease affects women in the age group of 40 to 60 usually women are affected because their physical work which are their home uh, in the home as well as in the uh, you know um, outside whatever the uh, you know the the strain on their um, uh, muscles and the legs or the hip bones back bones all these are affected uh, usually for the mostly seen in the women okay that too in the age between the 40 to 60 so it can also be a genetic disorder okay uh, it, not only the lifestyle the genetic or uh, disorder also may lead to this rheumatoid arthritis so the infection infectious arthritis is also one of the part in that so an infectious arthritis is, uh, in the you know synovial fluid the tissues of the joint is unusually caused uh, you know caused uh, infection by the bacteria or may also caused by the fungi or the viruses this bacteria fungi virus may spread through the bloodstream from the infected uh, tissue nearby uh, the infected joint which will again result in the rheumatoid arthritis most commonly affected areas are the knees shoulders elbow wrists fingers majority uh, uh, no just one joint is affected if, if at all a person is affected with a rheumatoid arthritis majority is one joint which will be most affected and the here and there there will be a pain but one joint is usually affected more so therapies for this arthritis is physical therapy and occupational therapy so uh, apart from this if i have to tell you there is a systematic diet and the uh, physical exercises will also help in overcoming this rheumatoid arthritis in the earlier stages but in the later stages these are the therapies physical therapy the physical therapy can help the patient in building the strength in the muscles that is what is the exercises that surround the affected uh, joint stronger muscles help stabilizing the weakened joint maybe this can be a uh, through a physiotherapy or can be an uh, through a medical uh, you can put under the medication also 
occupational therapy wherein the occupational therapist teaches how to reduce the strain on your joints see the way you walk or the way you sit you know the position may reduce a pressure on that particular joint which you have, which is been affected with the arthritis so the the therapist is going to teach that particular person how to uh, reduce the strain or pressure on a particular joint which has been affected they help the patient modify home and workplace so that the patient's movements do not aggregate aggravate over the uh, you know, aggravate your arthritis okay it may not turn too much into ex uh, extreme conditions and deformities is not seen if these are adapted to your livelihood okay so here ends up the topic of the rheumatoid arthritis and myasthenia gravis these two are the one of the one one each example for the uh, you know uh, autoimmune diseases that is the two main diseases which i told you organ specific immune disease and also the systemic immune disease um, two types each one i have taken up as an example and i have briefly explained to you about that if you have any doubts you can come back to me uh, uh, you know can have a comments on it if you have liked the video you can like the video and subscribe for it and the details of the previous video that is hypersensitivity is uh, the link will be uh, in the description you can refer for it okay thank you